What's up everyone? I'm Chirag and welcome to this video tutorial. So guys, recently AWS has announced support for function URLs for the Lambda function and in this video, I'm going to take you through it. So basically, function URLs for Lambda function are nothing but a dedicated HTTPS endpoint for a say Lambda function using which you can invoke or call the single Lambda function and execute the business logic. So basically with the addition of the function URL, one can easily configure HTTPS endpoint in front of the Sage Lambda function without having to additionally configure and operate services besides Lambda like API Gateway. So let's get started. So guys, uh, this video is the hands-on video. So let's navigate to the AWS Management Console. So now once you are within AWS Management Console, search for Lambda and navigate to Lambda Management Console. Now once you are within Lambda Management Console, click on Functions from the left panel and say Create Function. Now here we are going to create a new function. So give it a function name. I would say Demo Function URL. Within Runtime, I'm going to select Python 3.9 and within Permission, I will select the first option that is Create a New Role with Basic Lambda Permissions. Now once you are done with the configuration, click on create function. Now here we have successfully created the lambda function and now in this video we want to invoke or call this lambda function using function URL. Now in order to configure the function URL feature, you need to click on configuration and then scroll down to function URL in the left panel. Now here since we have not configured any function URL for this lambda function, it's showing no function URL. Now to configure it, you need to click on create function URL. Now here within function URL, we need to configure few option and auth type is one of the option that we need to configure. Now here uh, we have two option under auth type. It says AWS IAM and the second option is none. Now if you want to only allow authenticated IAM users to make request to this function URL, then you need to select AWS IAM or else if you want to open this function URL to the public, then you have to select none. However, in addition to the auth type, you can also use resource based policy to grant permission to other AWS accounts to invoke your function. Okay. Now for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm going to select none because I want to open the access to the public for this function URL. Okay. Now here we have successfully configured the auth type. Now the second thing that you might want to configure is cross origin uh, resource sharing. So that is totally optional. So if you want to configure it, click on this checkbox and then you can configure the relevant option as per your requirement. And then once you are done with that configuration, you can click on save. Now here, as you can see, we have successfully uh, configured or created the function URL and here we have our function URL up and running. So we can copy that and start invoking it. Now before we go ahead and use this function URL and invoke this lambda function, let's click on code and let's modify this code. Now here uh, we want to print event because we want to have a look at what kind of payload uh, that is coming to this lambda function while we invoke or call that function URL. Okay, so that's where I want to print the event. Now, apart from this, if you want to implement some sort of business logic, then you can implement over here. Your business logic goes here. But uh, for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm not going to write any sort of logic. Okay. So here your business logic goes and then uh, we have the return statement. Now here we can uh, configure that what kind of response we want to return, what kind of headers that we want to return or if we want to set any cookies or not. Right, so all that option you can configure as a part of this return statement. So let me show you some uh, dummy response that uh, how we can set some cookies or how we can pass the headers or if we want to pass a B64 encoded response then uh, what are the flags that we need to set. Okay, so the first is status code 200 so that looks good and then body uh, I would say hello from lambda is fine. And then if you want to configure headers, then here you can define the key value pair saying headers. And then uh, followed by a dictionary. Again, a key value pair. So let's say I want to pass on content type. And then I would say application slash JSON. And then I also want to pass some sort of uh, custom header. 
So I would say custom header, just the dummy header that I want to pass some value. Okay, so this is how you can pass on multiple headers. And then if you want to set uh, cookies, then you could define over here saying key as cookies. And then uh, within value, it should be a list. Okay. And here we can say, let's say sample cookie that we want to set and its value followed by equal to or say sample value and then let's say I want to also set max age over here and then equal to I would say 42,000 okay so this is how you can uh, set the cookies now if you want to uh, pass on the uh, base 64 encoded uh, data then you need to uh, set a flag okay saying whether the payload is base 64 encoded or not so here as of now uh, we are passing a simple uh, json uh, data as a part of the response so it is not base 64 encoded so that's where we will say it's false so this is how you can uh, uh, configure or set up the response that you want to send back uh, to the uh, function url invocation so i'm going to save this and say deploy so here we are all set to test the function url so let's copy the function url and open postman so here uh, if you look at the function overview panel on the right side we have the function url so we can copy this from here and open postman and paste it over here so here i'm not going to modify this uh, invocation url or i'm not going to add any sort of uh, route at this point of time okay so here i'm going to say uh, get method and then simply i'm going to say send so now as you can see it returns status code 200 uh, with the payload saying hello from lambda and within headers if you have a look at it then here we have the content type uh, as application slash json and somewhere uh, we should have our custom header as well so here it is so it says custom header some value and then uh, we have written two cookies right so it basically uh, says sample cookie equal to sample value and the max age okay and if you specifically look at the cookies tab then here you should be able to see the cookies uh, that we have uh, written as a part of the response so this is the very simple invocation that you can make and then uh, as I just mentioned that you can write your business logic over here and based on that you can return some value. Okay, so uh, this is how you can basically uh, use the function URL to invoke your Lambda function. Now uh, let's click on monitor and have a look at the logs in the CloudWatch. So here within CloudWatch logs, we are going to have a look at the print event statement that what kind of uh, request that we are receiving as a part of this request. So here we have the logs and let me expand this. So this request looks similar to what we kind of receive as a part of the API gateway configuration, right? So here we have the version, route key as the default route then the raw path so at this point of time we are directly invoking the uh, root path and we are not passing any sort of routes right uh, so that's the reason it's a slash and then we are not passing any sort of uh, query string parameter and then here we have the meta information okay and then uh, is base 64 encoded it's false so this is the information that we basically get as a part of the request now let's go back to the postman and let's uh, pass some route so here let's say uh, i want to uh, send something so this is the route that i want to call and then i also want to pass on some sort of query string parameter so i would say query as key and some value that i want to pass and then i want to call the post method okay and then within headers i would say content type as application slash json 
Now here, uh, one thing I want you to keep in mind is that don't forget to set the request uh, content type header to application slash JSON or text slash anything right in your test. Otherwise, the body will be uh, treated as base64 encoded. And then uh, you have to decode that request into your Lambda function or, or your Lambda handler, right? So keep that thing in mind. And then uh, as a part of the body, I would say raw. And here I want to pass some payload. I would say payload hello from src e c d e and now we are all set to click on send so let's click on send now as you can see it ran successfully return status code 200 uh, with the headers and the cookies that we have written now as a next step let's go back to our cloudwatch logs and have a look at the logs so here we have our second invocation okay so now as you can see uh, the raw path has been changed to slash send because uh, this is the route that we are calling and then within raw st query string here we have some key value pair that is query some value okay and then uh, we should be able to find payload somewhere so here it is so here within body we have the payload and the value that is hello from src e c d e and again the uh, payload is not base 64 encoded okay and then uh, we have rest of the metadata that you can uh, go through so guys this is how you can basically invoke the function url with different http methods and different routes and uh, the query string parameters and whatnot so here uh, basically whichever route that you use or whichever uh, sub route that you are going to define over here uh, ultimately it's going to send the request to the same lambda function so unlike api gateway we cannot uh, define a separate integration for each of the route okay so any route that you will call from here uh, will be sent or forwarded uh, to the same lambda function so within that lambda function you can uh, you know check for some conditions and based on that uh, you can execute your business logic if that is the requirement for multiple routes and again, uh, whichever HTTP method that you will use, it will be uh, sent back to the same Lambda function. Okay, so that's one of the limitation that I would say. So here, uh, one more thing I want you to uh, take notice that uh, each function URL over here is unique and it is mapped to the specific alias or the latest version of the uh, Lambda function. Now, since uh, each function URL is unique, you can define multiple URLs for the same Lambda function for different aliases. So now as a next step, let's go through a few of the limitation of the function URLs. So here I have listed a few of the limitation uh, that, that comes with the function URL. So here you cannot configure custom domain name unlike API gateway. And here we don't have other authorization options except IAM. Uh, we cannot uh, invoke this function URL asynchronously and features like API gateway usage plans, caching are not supported. And also uh, we don't have option for the payload transformation and as i just mentioned earlier that any routes that you will use to invoke that function url will lead to the same lambda function invocation so these are the few of the limitation now apart from limitation the function url is suitable for single function microservice with minimalistic functionality Apart from that, we can also use function URL to test the Lambda function while doing some sort of R&D without leaving the console. And it's also suitable for uh, building simple machine learning uh, inference, right? So these are a few of the uh, areas where we can leverage function URL. So guys, uh, that's all I wanted to cover as a part of this video. And till that time, if you want me to do tutorial on any use case or service, then please leave them below. And I will try my best to come up with a tutorial as soon as possible. And if you have any queries or comments, then again, please leave them below. And don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. And see you next time.